That's my stomach growling already. It, it decided to talk before I did. Um, yeah, so I got some thoughts about, I was thinking about Disney and the women who work there, the star type women who work there. And then I was looking up some things and I saw that this Black Widow movie is going to be coming out on some kind of Disney access something I don't completely understand it here's what it says it says I'm reading this article that's on um, MSN uh, let me see from GR plus I don't even know what that is there's somebody named Benjamin Abbott wrote this five days ago anyway if you're one of the many people wondering what is premiere access think of it like going to the cinema Disney Plus is the theater and premiere access is your ticket okay jumping ahead that's because premiere access will be the only way to catch Raya and the Last Dragon for those of us still in lockdown much like it was for Mulan in 2020 similarly both Cruella May 28th and Black Widow July 9th will launch via premiere access and in theaters simultaneously. So what I'm gathering from this is that the okay that fee is twenty nine. Okay. So you pay twenty nine ninety nine for one of these movies, and then I guess you can watch it. I guess as much as you want. So you have Disney Plus. Then you have to pay the $30 to watch these movies when they come out. And I'm saying this. I was thinking of Disney and the ladies. And I'm looking at this. I was just thinking of Scarlett Johansson and and, um, Gina Carano. I was going to talk about how their situation is. And um, I'm looking at it and I'm like... And then I happen to look at this Premiere Access thing. And they're all women's movies that you have to pay extra for. I mean, Ryan the Last Dragon, she's a girl, right? Cruella. That's Emma Stone. Um, and Mulan, we already know about. So, um, I was under the impression that Black Widow had been delayed further was that July 9th the further delay let me check I don't want to do I don't want to search online and do this at the same time because it'll stick because this is cheap laptop wait a minute okay so Black Widow was supposed to come out I mean it had been pushed back a couple times already but it was supposed to come out May 1st and I guess it's been pushed back now to July 9th um Disney and these studios, um, they're supposed to want to um, push this narrative about, you know, strong women and stuff like that. And um, But their actions, I just find it interesting that, you know, people don't have money. We know this. And a lot of people have been paying for the Disney streaming thinking they were going to get all the Disney stuff, especially people who um, bought in on that first. Um, remember, if you paid for the whole year, it was way cheaper if you got in right away in the beginning before the streaming service even appeared. So the point was, people have been having it and paying for it as a subscription. It's not a lot of money, although it's a subscription and you're supposed to get everything. now. They have this premier access thing that's $30, which find wonderful for a family of four with little kids who would normally go to the movie and pay a bunch of money for popcorn and all that stuff and then buy it when they come at home in the olden days before all these streaming services. They would buy the video and watch it ad nauseum. That's economically sound. Is it economically sound for a single person? No, it's not. A lot of single people, you know, buy 
want to watch Disney movies. Go to, now, I, as a person who went to the movies all the time, very rarely did I spend more than $8 on a movie. I mean, the last time they increased prices when I went, and I would go during matinees and stuff like that. So, I was going... And it was costing $7.19 when I bought tickets to stuff like Avengers. But that last year or so, there was the AMC Stubbs program. So I was, pay oh, Jesus. I was paying $20 a month. So I was paying $20 a month to see three movies a week. Now we're in a situation where during a pandemic, when everybody's in financial ruin, you have to buy all these different streaming services. And now that the theater experience is basically ruined, um, whether you want to go or not, it's now going to cost you $30 to watch a new movie. And like I said, it's interesting to me that so far they're female-led films that people have to pay extra for. Um, coincidence? I don't know. But my topic was actually going to be about how these um, strong women are being treated as if they are expendable or um, not supported. In fact, sometimes gotten rid of. Um, hang on a second. So we already know that Gina Carano got fired for ridiculous reasons. Um, Disney board looking to fire her um we can say lucasfilm but lucasfilm is part of disney so for whatever reason the house of mouse didn't see a problem with firing a strong woman for being strong and voicing her own opinions now she was part of a very big series and from what i can tell it's starting to look like they're not even going to bother going forward with that series so whether it's because of her or for whatever reason they're ready to basically light that show on fire which people loved you know and just discard it completely and move on because they didn't like something or the actress didn't behave you know she wasn't a well-behaved female and um i was looking at this black widow thing and i'm saying to myself okay that got pushed back again that's interesting now apparently scarlett johansson also said some things recently about um, actors and politics and speaking their mind and saying that people should just stick to acting which she's been political I remember seeing her um, during the Donald Trump days when the pink hat brigade was out there I remember her speaking at a rally and annoying me because I liked her to that point um, so she's been political so okay now she's saying they should leave politics behind. Maybe she learned something. I don't know. But um, her movie has been pushed back. And she's a strong female. And she was one of the Avengers. And they all got standalone movies. The Hulk had had some before they got to Ruffalo. Um, he had the one. Or the, he had two. I don't know. I think only one of them was Marvel, though. I'm not sure. Um, in terms of in that universe, the Ed Norton one, I think. I could be wrong. But, um, so there was no Black Widow movie. I still am not 100% sure. I know she's like a Russian spy or something. I have no idea. I don't think she has special powers. But um, it's weird because Scarlett Johansson, I don't, maybe people don't realize it because it's a different time but she's a box office draw the likes of which we haven't seen since you know a Sandra Bullock or a Julia Roberts even um she's been very popular for like 20 years um but I know that she's had an issue that people could attack her for too and I feel like Disney if not at least risk averse, they, it's the idea is 
anybody causing trouble, let's get rid of them. They don't want any stink. They don't want anything on their stock price, probably. They don't want anything influencing anybody to sell their stocks. They just want people to buy their stocks and to make more money and make more money. Um, so in a pandemic, you know, as rich as they are, they'll immediately, you know, let go a bunch of park workers. Um, so it's all about the money in a way. But it's interesting that the money is interfering with keep retaining these strong females and um, it comes down to politics and I said to myself before that I believe it's, it's a good possibility that they keep moving Black Widow and I don't want to say punishment but it looks like punishment it looks like people are punished for not behaving and in the case of Scarlett and why people will come after her. She's never disavowed Woody Allen, which is one of the things I really like about her. They're friends in, in her career. She starred with him. She starred in two of his movies, not with him, but two of his movies. And that really launched her. I think she likes him very much. And she has never um, turned her back on him the way a lot of other people have. Um... So it's interesting to me that she never got the Black Widow movie till now. And now that after Endgame, the interest in those characters, probably on the wane, keeps getting pushed back. Now she's, you're going to have to pay $30 to watch her movie. I think it's interesting because she, before all this, she did a movie by herself. Like, she didn't make it. She starred in a movie. I honestly don't remember any of the other actors in it. I went and saw that movie knowing it was a Scarlett Johansson movie if she was going to kick people. Okay? That movie was called Lucy. And that movie made $126 million domestically. Okay? And... Its worldwide total was $458 million. Well, I could round it up to $459 million. Its budget was $40 million. On opening weekend, it made 43 It made back its budget on opening weekend. Starring Scarlett Johansson. And who else? I don't even know. It was a good movie. People wanted to see it. All on her name. All on her acting ability. All on her popularity. All on her talent. And this woman has had to wait all this time to get her Black Widow movie. That's gotten pushed back. And is now going to be handicapped by this $29.99 fee on top of Disney+. Plus. I don't want to say nobody puts baby in a corner. They're putting her in a corner. You know what I mean? How is that empowering? How is that the message of strong women? You know, and like I said, they're, they have done, I don't believe for one second that there's not some part of their marketing or their, their somebody somewhere in Disney has everything to do with the continued attacks on Gina Carano. Has to. Because who else would care at this point? She she was, you know, not an A-list actress. She was on The Mandalorian. People who watched that show like her, that's not everybody. This was not a theatrical release. For people who didn't, you know, already watch Disney streaming, who weren't already Star Wars fans, you know what I mean? They wouldn't have known she was in the role. They wouldn't have known she was on that show. You know what I mean? She's been, she's been, you know, she had her, you know, what do you want to call it? Fighting career, <laughs> you know, so people who like that know her. And then she's been in a couple action movies here and there before this. So, you know, they could have left her on. They decided to fire her for nothing. After they fired her, it's been a PR nightmare because it was the wrong thing to do. It looked like they were looking to fire her, but it doesn't end. It doesn't end. And it's like, if anything, they should just let it go. But 
clearly there's some kind of issue going on behind the scenes where she's part of this group of enemies that they have that they're just going to continue to go after. So on Bill Maher's show, some former senator comes on and Bill Maher, they, I don't know what they were talking about because I don't have, I watched that, I haven't watched it, I should probably go watch it. They were talking about the clip that I've seen. He was talking about something and he was trying to remember Gina Carano's name. And he was saying, what was the name of the actress, the Mandalorian? And then this woman pipes in, oh, she's a Nazi. Now, look. To me, there's so many telltale signs in what this woman said. Because... She's so super confident calling another person a Nazi on a televised program that's going to stream all over the world. It's going to be on YouTube. That's not going to go away. She's not saying this in the elevator chit chat with her friend. She's not saying this by the water cooler. She's publicly calling this woman a Nazi with no problem. Then she tries to call her a white supremacist, stops herself but then says, oh no, she hangs around with white supremacists. And I'm saying to myself, there's so many questions in my head about that, but it's clear to me this woman believes what she's saying. Even though she's just some random person, she knows all about who Gina Carano is. And I'm willing to bet it's not based on watching The Mandalorian or anything else, but it's probably based on the idea, oh, there's this racist lady who just got fired from uh, this Star Wars show and that's the first she heard of her but now she knows everything about her she knows who she hangs around with she knows that she's a Nazi and she knows all these things and this is what's getting me about this this woman is so confident 100% feels like she can say all this stuff with absolute authority like she knows Gina Carano's whole life as she's on this program now What I know is, I don't know Gina Carano's whole life. I know that she seems like a nice person. She tweets sometimes. Sometimes I look at the tweets and I'm like, well, she's going to get into more trouble. But she doesn't care and people shouldn't care. People should be able to express themselves. But I don't know everybody who Gina Carano hangs around with. She could hang around with somebody who is a white supremacist. She could hang around with people who are in some group that has been determined a white supremacist. I don't know everything this woman does. But I also wouldn't come on TV saying all this stuff about someone, whether I knew it or not, because you can't do that. You're not supposed to do that. You could get in very serious trouble. You could get sued for saying defamatory things about a person. So this woman sitting there absolutely confident saying that, enjoying herself. And I'm saying to myself, okay, here's a woman who ran for office at some point did get elected, got unelected because she's a former senator, and, um, but she must know what it's like to be a woman trying to succeed at something. But she's over there enjoying herself, calling out this other woman who fought to have a career, who has now had it taken away over something that was bullshit. This You know, she believes it wasn't bullshit. She's 100% certain of the information she has in her head about her. And I'm just sitting there going, what, what level have we moved into now where women can be treated in this way? Anyone can be treated in this way by the media, by anybody. Anybody can say anything they want about people, call them whatever horrible word they want. And whether they will get retribution or not, they have no fear of it. They are on a side or they are in an echo chamber or they are in an inner circle where they're all talking to each other and they're all 100% and they're all confident that they are righteous and they are right and they are correct and they are 100% accurate in everything they say. I really try to not open my mouth until I'm very sure about things. And I make mistakes, especially getting older. I make just 
normal mistakes of old age. But I go out of my way to not say something like it's a fact unless I'm 100% sure. And I try to remember and remain a decent human being and always say, never ever say that I'm 100% sure. Always say that I'm 99.9% sure. When I say that, that means I, I'm like, I saw something. I witnessed something. I know for a fact. But I'm still going to hold out that 0.1% that somehow... I made a mistake because I'm never going to say that I'm a perfect, infallible human being. Nobody is. So for me to even attempt to say the things that these people say about another woman who was fired from her job and they're trying to erase her from society and being comfortable with it and saying it out in the world, being recorded on a television show, to me, these people have some, they like, they feel like somebody... Are they, they seem like they feel like they have immunity the way somebody who's going to testify against somebody else has immunity from a crime. And this is what I'm saying. This thing behind the scenes where all these entities are connected or all these people on that same side of an agenda, they feel like they can say and do whatever they want and they're, it's never going to come back to them. And I haven't seen that before in life. And it's revolving around actors and actresses and it's coming from this agenda of people needing to say the right things and fit the narrative or everything they say must fit the narrative. And if they cause trouble, they're out of here. Or if they don't toe the line, get rid of them. They'll never work in this town again. That whole way of being is very frightening if you're a person who believes in any kind of freedom at all. And... Honestly, I'm beyond frightened at this point. I I feel like we're in the beginning stages of, you know, having, you know, no freedom at all. And we're already, our feet are already in. We're already halfway in. You know what I mean? It's like, this isn't, oh, this might happen someday. It's happening now. And um, I question the people who are taking part. I don't know why... Like if you, if you think of a totalitarian society, you think of any of the dystopian things we've watched, you think of 1984, you think of, I don't know, Nazi Germany, you think anything that says people are not free. I can't imagine the person who says, I'm okay with that as long as I'm one of the elite in that society where no one's free. Or it's, you know what I mean? Like, like people who would not mind being in a, in, you know, a situation where there's no freedom for anybody, but as long as they're one of the ones doing the enforcing, you know what I mean? As long as they have a status, as long as they're an important person in that society, they don't care because they, these people must think, oh yeah, all this crap and everybody's going to not be free and it's going to be the hunger games, but I'm going to be the lady on the show, you know, or I'm going to be one of the fancy people so it's okay. I don't care. Those people aren't free either. The fancy people, the people with status in a totalitarian society, they're not free either. So why are you willing to not be free? I don't know, just to have nice clothes and fancy food and, you know, think of yourself as an important person. Is that what it is? Because clearly the people who are, I'm talking about regular people, like people on Twitter who attack anybody who steps outside of the current, how you're supposed to be, the things you're supposed to do, you know, if you're supposed to wear a mask, if you're supposed to social distance, if you're supposed to not hug your grandma, if you're supposed to get a vaccine, whatever, all the things that you're supposed to be doing right now and all the people, regular Joes who will start attacking you if you don't want to do that or if you disagree All right, from them all the way to these people who have some status who also feel like, oh, no, okay, I can do this and it'll be fine because once we get to this horrible totalitarian regime, I'm going to be one of the people in charge or I'm going to be one of the people on top or something. Who would want to live in that world? V for Vendetta. Any kind of world where the people aren't free, any movie that you can imagine where the people aren't free, Nobody is free. The people at the top aren't free either. So why 
are these people so happy to go along and do this? And like I said, it's got to be coming from a massive pool of people on the left who are driving this agenda. What it exactly has to do with Disney, I don't know, but Disney's so big that they would be the perfect conduit for this agenda, the, 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 the vessel, the, the, the way to brainwash the children, if you will, into believing the dogma that they're trying to push. And um, so it's, you know, politics and the Disney company are starting to be the same thing. And for, it's interesting, like I said, because everything's supposed to be about female empowerment and stuff like that. And all I'm seeing is a bunch of women. I'm seeing a bunch of women, one woman attacking another woman. I'm seeing women who, a woman who should have had a huge movie because she would have made the money on her own years ago in the box office with us all showing up on Friday or Thursday night, you know, ready to see the movie as soon as possible just because it's Scarlett Johansson having that movie delayed 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 until now it's going to be mostly streaming but you got to pay an additional $30 another woman fired for speaking her mind and it's all women if you want to talk about Lucasfilm and people you know being unhappy with you know some of the decisions Kathleen Kennedy made whether she is the one who decided to fire Gina Carano. All I see is women bashing women, women still being relegated to streaming, women not being able to express themselves without being fired. And and then these movies that have come out on streaming that cost you 30 bucks, Mulan, Rhea, Cruella DeVille, all women. How empowering is this? How good for females is this? In a totalitarian society, do the women win? When we're talking about might and brute force and no freedom, doesn't that affect women more than anyone else? I, this lie of female empowerment that's coming from the powers that be while there's this whole other underbelly going on of smacking or punishing or erasing any woman who or delaying or trying to put in a corner a woman who speaks her own mind and has her own thoughts and has freedom, the strength in herself to be free. Um... It doesn't make sense unless somebody's lying and really doesn't give a rat's ass about women. A rat's ass. <sighs> Mickey's ass. I don't know. It doesn't make sense to me the way Disney has all these women in the fold. The way politics and Disney are combined. The way everything is seems to be about towing the line or being being punished being punished or not being supported or being relegated to being pushed back pushed back pushed back streaming 30 bucks i mean like i said i i under normal times if they said to you if they said to me okay um before the pandemic if they said okay well we're only going to release this movie on streaming and it's $29.99 plus the subscription fee that you're already paying but then once you watch it you can watch it forever I would have been like hell no I'm not spending that much money on a film I haven't seen sight unseen I would never do that so this is again about the elite or something I don't even know it's just I don't know what they're doing I don't know what they think they're doing but they seem to think that we're all their playthings and they can do whatever they want with any of us and we'll always keep coming back and people will always pay for streaming and now they'll pay for the privilege to sit in their house and watch a movie on a small screen 
without the theater experience for 30 bucks. The only people who think that are people who 30 bucks means nothing. 30 bucks is nothing to them, right? They sneeze and 30 bucks falls out. This is going in a bad direction. And I keep seeing women in the middle of it. And they're either on the totalitarian end, they're on the punisher end, or they're being punished. I don't know what they think they're doing. I don't know what the real agenda is. I don't know who's behind the scenes really pulling the strings on this. They're destroying a lot. This is not the happiest place on earth. Earth is becoming a real crappy place. And somehow Disney's in the middle of all that. Why? They're supposed to make us happy. They're supposed to inspire us. They're supposed to make us dream. We're supposed to wish upon a star. This is completely subverted my expectations of what the Walt Disney Company is and was when I was growing up and what it meant. We don't need this. We don't need this crap in the world. We don't need the world to be going to hell. It's really sad. And why Disney seems to be in the middle of it. Why whoever is... I Like I said, I don't even know. I can't even blame... I don't even believe it's the people in charge. Like it was Bob Iger. I just forgot the other... Was it Chapek or something like that is the guy's name? The Kathleen Kennedys. They're answering to somebody. They're all answering to somebody. And whoever this is... Or these people are, they're ruining the world by way of politics and entertainment and mixing the two and making it a nightmare stew. <sighs> There's starting to be no hope. No hope that this is ever going to right itself. 